All right, guys, today we start the flight of Icarus. All right, it's a pretty cool story based on Greek mythology. Now, uh, I want to set up some background information before we actually go into the story because Greek mythology has a lot of story to it, a lot of characters going on, and um, the flight of Icarus is actually a sequel to a story that was already um, that already happened by the time the flight of Icarus begins. So I'm going to introduce you to some characters that kind of set up the background of this story. So this is Theseus. He's a pretty big dude, right? He's pretty buff. He's a warrior. Theseus, um, he got on the bad side of a guy named King Minos. Now, King Minos uh, had a pretty hot daughter, King Minos's daughter. All right. Now, Theseus wanted to marry King Minos's daughter, and she wanted to marry Theseus. However, the king, King Minos, did not want them to get married. So he thought he um, would do something clever, and he would say, all right, Theseus, you can only marry my daughter if you can go into the labyrinth, which is this huge maze that's impossible to get to, go into the middle of the labyrinth, find the Minotaur, which is this big beast thing, and kill it, and then you can escape with my daughter. Yeah, sure, good luck. Theseus is like, all right, I'll do it. So he goes into the labyrinth. Now, as he's trying to find the way into the labyrinth so he can actually win King Minos' daughter, the daughter goes uh, to the guy who built the labyrinth. His name is Daedalus, all right? And he's a smart guy. He's the one who designed the whole labyrinth, all right? He made it. Now, he told her the secret of how to beat the labyrinth. He said, man, even I don't know my way in and out of there. But the way to beat it is to take some string with you. When you go in, the string will go all the way through and, and just leave the string behind you. Go in, get what you, need, what you need to do, and then get out. So she tells Theseus, and Theseus is able to go into the labyrinth and actually f uh, fight the Minotaur. That's what a Minotaur looks like. It's kind of like this ox thing. He goes, he kills the Minotaur, escapes with King Minos' daughter, and they're gone. This leaves King Minos very, very upset. And who is he upset with? Well, he's not really too upset with Theseus. He can't do anything. Theseus is already gone. He's not upset with his daughter because she's gone. He can't do anything about that. He's upset with Daedalus, the guy who created the labyrinth. And so he takes Daedalus and his son Icarus, that's that name, and he puts them on an island in the middle of the sea, uh, up in a tower, to die. And that is where the flight of Icarus begins. It begins with Daedalus and his son Icarus in a tower, on an island, there to die. So now remember, Daedalus is a smart guy. He's a builder. The whole story of the flight of Icarus is how Daedalus is going to get him and his son, Icarus, off the island. So let's jump into the book. Now, you guys won't have to open the book on your computer because I have it here in the video for you. All right. Um, so this is the flight of Icarus. Now, just based off of this image here, there's feathers kind of floating in the sky, and then there's the sun over here. What are some guesses you might be able to make uh, about this story? So as we go ahead and go through this story, um, make sure you answer the questions that come up. Um, Ed Puzzle allows me to see if you've watched the story or if you watched the video, which will let me know if you've actually listened to the story. Remember, there's going to be a test on this stuff this Friday. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to the story of the flight of Icarus. Icarus, Greek myth retold by Sally Benson. When Theseus escaped from the labyrinth, King Minos flew into a rage with its builder, Daedalus, and ordered him shut up in a high tower that faced the lonely sea. In time, with the help of his young son, Icarus, Daedalus managed to escape from the tower only to find himself a prisoner 
on the island. Several times he tried by bribery to stow away on one of the vessels sailing from Crete, but King Minos kept strict watch over them, and no ships were allowed to sail without being carefully searched. Question I want to ask you guys, what would you do to try to get off the island if you were in Daedalus's position? Daedalus was an ingenious artist and was not discouraged by his failures. Minos may control the land and sea, he said, but he does not control the air. I will try that way. He called his son Icarus to him and told the boy to gather up all the feathers he could find on the rocky shore. So, knowing that, what do you think Daedalus is going to do or try to do? As thousands of gulls soared over the island, Icarus soon collected a huge pile of feathers. Daedalus then melted some wax and made a skeleton in the shape of a bird's wing. The smallest feathers he pressed into the soft wax, and the large ones he tied on with thread. Icarus played about on the beach happily while his father worked, chasing the feathers that blew away in the strong wind that swept the island and sometimes taking bits of the wax and working it into strange shapes with his fingers. All right, I want to point something out here. Daedalus is working very hard to try to get him and his son off the island. But what is Icarus doing? He, he's playing on the beach. He's chasing feathers. He, he's taking some wax and he's making the strange shapes. This kind of shows that Icarus, either he's not too bright or he's not too mature. Either way, um, he's not going to be headed towards a, a happy ending here. It was fun making the wings. The sun shone on the bright feathers. The breezes ruffled them. When they were finished, Daedalus fastened them to his shoulders and found himself lifted upwards, where he hung poised in the air. Filled with excitement, he made another pair for his son. They were smaller than his own, but strong and beautiful. Now, obviously, this is a myth. You, know, you can't make uh, wings out of feathers and actually expect to be carried up in the air. Uh, but this is, again, a fairy tale. It's a story. Uh, let's go on. Finally, one clear, windswept morning, the wings were finished, and Daedalus fastened them to Icarus's shoulders and taught him how to fly. He bade him watch the movements of the birds, how they soared and glided overhead. He pointed out the slow, graceful sweep of their wings as they beat the air steadily without fluttering. Soon, Icarus was sure that he too could fly, and raising his arms up and down, skirted over the white sand and even out over the waves, letting his feet touch the snowy foam as the water thundered and broke over the sharp rocks. Daedalus watched him proudly, but with misgivings. He called Icarus to his side and, putting his arm round the boy's shoulders, said, Icarus, my son, we are about to make our flight. No human being has ever traveled through the air before, and I want you to listen carefully to my instructions. Keep at a moderate height, for if you fly too low, the fog and spray will clog your wings. And, if you fly too high, the heat will melt the wax that holds them together. Keep near me, and you will be safe. So at this point in the reading, uh, the book actually has this video. I was going to go into that last paragraph that we read and help us make some kind of guesses and, and inferences about um, the characters and what's going to happen in the story. So let's watch this video together. Soon Icarus was sure that he too could fly, and raising his arms up and down, skirted over the white sand and even out over the waves, letting his feet touch the snowy foam as the water thundered and broke over the sharp rocks. So this is a big moment for Icarus. I can picture him raising these strong, beautiful wings up and down. Yeah, and then suddenly he's in flight. 
He skirted over the white sand and the waves. I like that word skirted. I think it means to move around or about. Yeah, I also like the image of letting his feet touch the snowy foam. It seems playful. Yeah, but then the water thundered over the sharp rocks. It seems like there might be a little sense of danger there. Maybe the author is trying to tell us something about Icarus and how he's being carefree in a situation that's actually really serious. That could be. Let's look at the next part. Daedalus watched him proudly but with misgivings. He called Icarus to his side and, putting his arm round the boy's shoulders, said, Icarus, my son, we are about to make our flight. No human being has ever traveled through the air before, and I want you to listen carefully to my instructions. Daedalus knows that he's giving his son a huge responsibility. Icarus is a child, and he wants him to take this seriously. That might be why he watches him proudly but with misgivings. You know, the tone is suddenly not as carefree as the first part. It sounds more serious here. Yeah, and in the first part of the passage, it seems we're learning about the son, where in this part, we're seeing things more from the father's perspective. And having Daedalus say, no human being has ever traveled through the air, and listen carefully, might make you wonder, what's going to happen here? So then it goes on. Keep at a moderate height, for if you fly too low, the fog and spray will clog your wings, and if you fly too high, the heat will melt the wax that holds them together. Keep near me, and you will be safe. Keep at a moderate height. He is saying not too low, or the water will get you, not too high, or the sun will get you. Just keep near me so I can protect you. It sounds kind of like he's warning Icarus. Yeah, and this is a myth. Myths often try to teach a lesson or moral. So we'll have to read on and see how Icarus does. All right, let's stop at this point in the story for today, and let's look at the five and a half elements of story to see where we are right now in the flight of Icarus. So here are the five and a half elements of story, exposition, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. And my apologies, in yesterday's video, I accidentally put exposition twice, but this last one here is resolution. So, question to you is, where in the five and a half elements of story are we right now in the flight of Icarus? So, if you said we're in the rising action, you're right. All right. Uh, first, let's start off with the exposition. What part of the story was the exposition. Yeah, the exposition was when um, Daedalus and Icarus, they uh, get down from the tower, they find themselves trapped on this island, and oh my, what do they do? That's the exposition. Now, what part of the story was the inciting incident? The inciting incident is when Daedalus makes the wings. That's what changes their situation. That's the moment he's like, oh my goodness, things are going to change. And we'll see at the climax how much that changes their situation. But the inciting incident is when they make the wings. Now, remember, rising action has more than just one part to it. There's a couple different parts of rising action. What part so far has been the rising action of the story? Yeah, at this point, we know the rising action has consisted of uh, Icarus uh, running around collecting feathers, um, teaching how to fly. Uh, he's kind of going too close to the rocks, and he's, Icarus is kind of being a little dangerous with the wings, but his dad's teaching him. Uh, those are all the rising actions. When we start the rest of the story tomorrow, it's going to go with more rising action until it gets to the climax of the story.